A deburring wheel is used for removing sharp edges on parts. What it does is it removes a little bit of material and rounds the corner over so that that sharp 90 degree or whatever angle it is, is no longer coming to a point. It's rounded off so that you could rub your hand along it and it won't cut you primarily. Is good for transporting the parts and preventing them from damaging other things. Today I'm going to show you how to use the deburring wheel, the different features and shapes that you can get into with it, and a couple of things like showing how to hold it properly for the best leverage and safety. So PPE is going to be an important uh, part of using this tool. This particular one is uniquely hazardous from the dust. Uh, it does create metal dust from whatever metal you are working with. And the wheel itself also breaks down and comes off creating dust of its own. So metal dust is toxic and then I'm sure whatever the wheel is made out of and the abrasive that it has on it is probably just as bad as the metal dust. So you don't want to be breathing that in. And you also want to keep this machine away from any other precision equipment. You don't want that dust traveling and settling on other things that it should not be. Um, so this machine is best kept in a grinding area or something like that. At the very least, I recommend safety glasses, a dust mask, an apron is great to keep it off of your shirt. I also recommend a face shield for this. If you're doing a lot of it or you're not familiar with the wheel, it's great to start out with one of these. So what is the best way to hold the part while you're deburring it? for safety and to get the best results. Basically, there's two things that you need to think about when you are deburring a part. One of them is how can you hold the part to access the edges that you want to deburr? And the other one is how do you hold it so that you have the best leverage on the part compared to the wheel? You want to hold the part more securely and from an angle of advantage. You want to hold the part at an angle of advantage on your side. So the wheel is going to be contacting the part and you're going to be holding the part at the same time. You want to have more control over the part than the wheel does. That is a critical thing and a great easy way of thinking about it. You want to have more control over the part than the wheel does. This is another tool that is largely dependent on your feel and understanding of what's going on to get the best results. So for a simple piece of sheet metal like this, you can deburr all the edges and do the corners, but you're gonna find it safer and easier if you, for example, approach the wheel at a slight angle, not totally vertical and going this way and you can do that all the way around on both sides. And then if you want to round the corners, you can do that also. But you're gonna find that instead of doing it this way, if you deburr the corner this way, you're gonna have a better result. Your pivot, your fulcrum up here is on a high center to the wheel. So being above center with your control and the wheel pulling the part down you have much better control going this way than you do going this way. With your wheel going down and your part going into it with your leverage below, you're asking for this wheel to grab this part and shove it out of your hand. And that's exactly what you don't wanna do. You're creating a grab point here where if it gets enough grip on the top of the part, it's gonna fling it down and probably rip it right out of your hand. Another piece of PPE that I want to mention that can be beneficial is these little finger gloves, which I think are called finger cots. And what these are for is they are leather fingertips that you can fit to different fingers, whichever ones you're working close to the wheel with. They give you some wear protection so that you can accidentally touch the wheel and it'll just wear the leather away a little bit and not wear your skin off. The other benefit to these and the reason that they're partial fingers 
is so that they can easily come off. If for whatever reason you got the finger caught grabbing on the wheel or in between your part or something like that, it will simply rip it off your finger and it won't be pulling a whole glove off or pull your finger into the wheel like a, a full glove would. You want to treat this just like a bench grinder and what that means is that before you turn it on you want to make sure that you are not standing right in front of it. This is to keep you safe in case the wheel comes apart or there's anything wrong with the machine or anything flies off you will not be in the trajectory of all the debris. Stand to the side, turn it on, let it spool up, and then go to your work. We're gonna start with our simple piece of sheet metal here. This is a piece of aluminum. And what I wanna do is the outside edges, and then I'll show you how to round the corners on it also. And what you wanna do is I find it best to go top to bottom. You wanna go with the direction of the wheel and because we want to get this edge, you want to be as close to a 45 degree angle to the wheel as you can. Uh, because there's two edges to this. There's, there's one edge on each side of the sheet metal. Even though it's thin, you're going to get a better result doing both rather than just running it straight down the wheel like this. We're going to go down at a 45 and across a little bit. And just rotate your way around. Do all four sides, flip it over, and do the same thing. Now this being aluminum on this wheel, it does remove a decent amount of material, so that is deburred and not sharp. It won't cut you anymore. And then if you want to do a rounded corner, you can touch on the corner a little bit rocking it back and forth to get the whole radius and then you'll end up with a curved uh, corner like that which looks better and is safer to touch also. This is just a piece of uh, aluminum rod. This has been cut on a parting machine so it has a sheared edge on it which is a pretty good edge to begin with but is still uh, sharp to the touch. So in this case you're going to hold it at an angle going down with the wheel also and then just rotate it as you hold it against the wheel. And that's going to give you a very fast, nice rounded edge there. And then if you want to do the face and give it even more of a radius, you can continue working on that to get whatever finish you want on there. And that same principle goes for any diameter round rod. It's just a quick and easy way to take the corners off it after you turn it on the lathe or sheared it off or whatever it is. Very fast and easy. Here's another aspect ratio. You have a very flat wide disc part and we're going to be doing the same thing but because it's too short to rotate all the way around easily you're going to have to do it in sections. So what I'll do is I'll give it that same angle that I did with the sheet metal and also contact the wheel at that 45 degree angle to even out the radius it's putting on that edge. And I'll just index it around a couple times to get the finish all the way around. It does require repositioning your fingers which is where we start to get a little bit more dangerous. But once you get used to it and where to restart the finishing, then you get the same result. Here's an example of a aluminum channel part. So this is just as it came off of the milling machine. We've milled the edge flat and cut an angle on this side as you can see, there's burrs and sharp material hanging off everywhere.
then this is where we start to get a little bit more detailed with how to get into corners. I would start on the corner of the wheel to get in as far as I can and then feed the part down. Do the same thing for the other corner, maybe on the other side. And now you've got the inside and the outside done. And we'll do the same for the other side. You kind of have to pick and choose what direction you want to hold it based on what options you have. This particular wheel is a medium density and this one has turned out to be my favorite over the years. There is a harder density and a softer density available in this particular line. The softer ones are a little bit better for getting into curved shapes and surfaces that are uneven, but they do wear out more quickly. And the firmer wheels are better for harder materials or things that you need to press harder onto to get your edge correct. And they wear slowly, but they're not quite as good at conforming into different shapes and uh, edges. This wheel is also regular uh, six inch wire wheel, great for rust removal. On the next one here, we jump over to a standard bench grinder setup. We have a fine finish uh, grinding wheel for high speed steel. On the other side, we have the matching rough grinding wheel for high speed steel. And then going around, we move to a buffing wheel. So we have two different buffs set up on here. This is a soft finishing one very flexible and over here we have a little bit firmer one that has been sewn so it's more rigid and then we move into a grinding wheel setup this is what we use for touching up changing shapes of carbide inserts and uh, some of them uh, for resharpening and then we have a front cutter on this one is a standard uh, flat face quarter inch width this is a piece of mild steel and it just came off the saw so you can see that it's got all kinds of uh, burrs and junk attached to it. Rolling it just like we did the other material and it gives us a nice deburred clean safe edge. Now we can get inside a little bit and you're trying to hook the material on the bottom edge and not the top. So there we've done the inside. So here's a piece of 316 stainless steel and we have uh, faced this side on the lathe and we have a sharp edge here, so I'm gonna show you the, uh, the result we get from that, even on a harder piece of material. In one pass, you get a nice rounded edge on there. And you can go around it as many times as you want to get a larger uh, radius, uh, but just a couple passes is all you need. Here we have the same thing, a faced edge on the lathe on a piece of hard tool steel.
quick edge on that. This is cast iron that has a milled edge around the diameter. This is a gray iron, so it's very soft and gives a nice soft edge on there. This is more of an example of a part and has a couple different features that will let me show you a couple of different techniques here. We can go around the outside the same way that we did with the sheet metal and just give a quick deburred edge there really fast. And then we have a couple internal features here. What I would do is I would start at the bottom of the radius there with the corner edge of the wheel and just tilt it a little bit and work my way up that edge. And that gets you on the inside of that uh, sharp slot there. And we'll do it on both sides to get the whole thing. And then we have this little square slot here. We can use the corner of the wheel and just curve it around there and we're done with that. And then we can use the same concept for the slot on the other side. Flip it over and get the other one. Obviously it would be easier if we had a couple hundred of these. I would just throw them in the tumbling machine and uh, let them run for about half an hour and they would come out the same. But if you only have one or a couple, this is quick and easy and a good way to get it done. And we're going to show a little bit of surfacing with this. Just quickly deburr this so that it's safe and doesn't grab like it just did. So now we have a safe part and this one I chose because it's rusty. We'll do a quick uh, surface buffing on this and see if we can't get that off pretty easily. It's similar to the belt grinder in a way, but this is removing much less material and is a little bit more flexible. It does get warm as you go, so be aware of that. But you can very quickly uh, take the rust off some material and make it look like new. Now, just for fun here, and I know because it's going to uh, make a few people cringe, but I'm gonna take an old end mill here. This is a high-speed steel tool, and I'm just going to see what it's gonna look like if we take the cutting edge off of that. So with something like this, you want to be very careful and be, do it safely because this is uh, specifically designed for cutting and you don't want to turn it into something that cuts your hands while you're doing this. Just one quick pass with this has turned this high-speed end mill into something that looks like, so it looks like something I just cut carbon fiber with. That edge is completely destroyed. This tool would not cut anything at this point. Uh, we'll throw it in the bucket. And just for fun, we have a small carbide end mill here also. This one has been recycled and ground a couple times. And uh, I'm just curious to see what we'll get uh, with this wheel on carbide. So that's pretty impressive to me that you can actually deburr carbide with this wheel. Um, it takes a little bit longer, of course, but I just put a radius on all the tips of those uh, flutes with a few seconds on the wheel. And I didn't notice any wear on the wheel. Uh, didn't put a groove in it or anything like that. 
So it just shows whatever abrasive they use in that wheel is pretty tenacious stuff. So you can re-true the wheel after you've been cutting a bunch of parts on it. And especially if you do the corner rounding, you're going to get a lot of grooves in here. And you have two options. You can either choose to be disciplined enough to use the high spots on the next part as you go along, or you can take a piece of sandpaper and true the wheel and flatten it back out. It's better use of the wheel if you just stay on the high spots, although it's a little bit more work and you have to pay attention, but I think it's good for your learning to get the feel of the wheel and be able to control the part in your hands. My question for you is, what is your favorite deburring wheel and what do you use it for?